So long COVID is a syndrome that has unfortunately many definitions and I think different medical groups around the world are trying to come up with a consensus definition which has not yet been reached. Uh, WHO has put out a definition. Um, the NIH is working on a project to help better define the disease by looking at 12 of the most common symptoms. But in general, long COVID is a disorder with multiple systems that lasts for at least two months after the onset of COVID and symptoms are ongoing for an at least three months after that. And for many people, it's much longer than that. It seems to occur not only after people who've had severe COVID, such as those who've been hospitalized or even put into intensive care units, but it can also occur in people who had very mild infections and were maybe seen as outpatients or maybe never even seen in a, a medical center. Probably the most, in, from a neurology perspective, probably the most, uh, the, the symptom of most concern is brain fog, uh, where patients or uh, people who've suffered from COVID feel that they just can't concentrate. They feel that their brain has a fog around it. Um, and it's a, a common complaint we've heard, not only from long COVID, but from people who've gotten over other illnesses, including viral illnesses. There's an entity called chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, which is thought in some cases to also be a post-viral syndrome and has many overlapping symptoms. And the, one of the problems with chronic fatigue syndrome is that we don't have an, uh, a, an onset point. We don't know what the antecedent event was. Whereas with long COVID, we have a test. We can know who has uh, the, the virus, we know approximately when it would have begun in 2020 or beyond. So this affords us an opportunity to study the post-viral effects that can affect not just the brain, but other systems. So some of the other sim symptoms that people with long COVID experience could be gastrointestinal upset, musculoskeletal pain, uh, fatigue, uh, post-exertional fatigue, so they just can't exercise. If they do, they're just exhausted for days afterward. Uh, so there's a multitude of symptoms. And probably what th there are four areas in which probably most researchers are thinking about might be the cause of long COVID. One, and the one that I debated, is could it be an autoimmune disease? Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, others are that could it just be injury from the virus, damage to the tissue? Another would be um, latent virus that has not actually left the body, that's being held in reservoirs that you can't detect, let's say, by a nasal swab or a blood test, but are maybe latent in the brain or in other organs. And then the fourth is something called viral reactivation. It turns out that uh, some people who've gotten COVID uh, who previously have had other viruses such as Epstein-Barr virus that has been latent inside themselves but silent um, all of a sudden seems to have emerged. And that's sort of a fourth major possibility. There are some others, but those probably are some of the four leading ones. And in, um, so I was uh, assigned the, the debate, as sometimes happens at, at this uh, fascinating conference. I was assigned to take the side that long COVID is an autoimmune disease. And when I first was assigned that, I was, I was bummed out because I thought that that was less likely than the others. And initially when I started talking to, I'm not an expert in long COVID, at least prior to this debate. So I did, I had to start almost from ground zero and do a lot of research. I spoke to and communicated with investigators all over the United States who've been studying this since 2020. And 
uh, it seems that all of them feel that there is a component that probably is autoimmune. And from my conversations with these experts, with reading the literature, I think one of the difficulties with long COVID is that it's probably not one disease. It's not one syndrome. And there's evidence that certain people with certain groups of symptoms might have different ideologies, or maybe it'll be like a Venn diagram. There'll be overlapping ideologies. And there's probably a group that has uh, autoimmunity. What is the evidence for autoimmunity? Well, they're in the acute stages of COVID. If we look at the blood, if we look at the spinal fluid, there's abundant evidence that there are antibodies being generated that probably are against the virus, but they are cross-reactive and they bind to human antigens, so proteins on human cells from the nervous system to other bodily organs. And this has been shown not just from looking at the blood, by act, but also by computer modeling, looking at what the epitopes are on the virus and showing the um, epitopes in the human genome that can actually, or proteome actually, that can actually match these. Um, so there are multiple um, investigations that have supported this. And also in long COVID, in some patients, not all, there seems to be inflammation going on in the nervous system. One of my colleagues at UCSF, Dr. Joanna Helmuth, uh, she actually did lumbar punctures in uh, a few dozen patients and found that a, uh, a reasonable percentage of them had abnormalities in their spinal fluid that could be indicative of an inflammatory autoimmune disease. And these were patients who were mildly affected, never hospitalized, had mild COVID, but were complaining of long COVID symptoms, often brain fog. Um, and in other studies have shown that some of these patients do seem to have autoantibodies and that they might be more common than in people who don't, who've had COVID, but they've recovered. They don't have long COVID. Depends who my opponent in the debate, um, Dr. Uh, Professor Hartung from Dusseldorf, he used citations that said five to 15%. Uh, most of the literature I've read has been in the 10 to as high as 23% range. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. And uh, I think your point is an excellent one that there's probably a degree of underreporting because many patients are suffering from it but haven't sought medical attention. They just assume they'll, they'll get over it. So I suspect it's even higher than what the literature reports because there's an inherent bias in the literature that we're only seeing the patients who've sought medical attention or come in for studies. So probably 20% is a reasonable number, which is considering how many people have had COVID, it's a huge number. Even as early as 2021, just in Europe alone, uh, there was a, a low ball estimate of 17 million people affected with long COVID, with long COVID.